Please give a warm welcome to Mr. Eric Pedusa. Uh -huh. Good afternoon. Kakyo tatam skat no. No ako magantik. Nista ni matap si noma. At may si chikay chiko gani chikapoy no ko tayong tungo ako. Dancing to get sweet cheese, where dancing to get say, Yah Kapo, Yah Kista, now, Tani Posta Mas, where Katawaki, where got ties by Kiano, Che, a woman, Kiano, Katu Testa Mas, where. But, but uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm grateful and humbled to be asked to, to have been invited here to present. Uh, <clears throat> this prestigious gathering. It is important that we consider taking action. You've heard these words before. I've been in the, in the business of public relations 20, 20, going on 20, 26 years. I've seen, I've seen good developments. I've seen a lot of, a lot of improvement in tribal country, and then many efforts are, are, are in the making. But before I um, commence with my uh, presentation, I uh, thought I would contribute a little bit to healing and doctoring, since I too come from generations of healers and healers and helpers. Recently, um, I got some information sent to me and I said, and they, and they said, it's important that you share this. It concerns not only tribal people, but all of us as individuals that live in North America today. And what I want to talk about, ladies and gentlemen, it's important. In Cree, we call it Puekit to win. Yes, farting. Did you know that? <laughs> Did you know that if you if you hold if you hold your gas too long, it contributes to an increase of chances of getting dementia and uh, Alzheimer's. If you release it ever so often, less chance that you're going to have of getting dementia or Alzheimer's. And my uncle here, Mr. Large, <laughs> showed us this this afternoon. Yes, it's important that you, you develop your left brain, right brain. If you, want to develop, if you want to develop your left brain by releasing gas, you go, <laughs> your right brain, <laughs> 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 So my, my, my contribution to healing yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> when I talked about in uh, North Battleford, uh, intrigued, uh, the coordinators there, and they invited and uh, called me up and says, would you come along and join us again? And <clears throat> what I talked about was about sovereignty, reinvigorating economic sovereignty. After the Ice Age, when everything was reorganized, Station known was, was given the responsibility, mandated to restructure everything, to re reconfigure the land, the landscapes that we see today that were all reconstructed. All human beings, all animals, everything that grows, anything that has a root, anything that has a, that, that has, has a spirit, and that's how this, this North American continent was made for us. And it was made in such a way that it never, never, never to run out of natural resources for our well-being. Everything that you talked about here. Kia no egiibusia a ski the maps in there, 
the, the map, the way it's broken down in sections, it's all territorial, tribal territories. It is, it is important to note when the newcomers came, they saw, they saw the richness. How can they get to it? How can they get at it and claim it as their own? Well, one of the ways, ladies and gentlemen, is well documented, is well written, and now a lot of in, uh, tribal people, indigenous peoples, whatever you want to use, have written about it, and non-Indians have written about it. And one of, the, one of the ways was cleansing the land, doing away with the original peoples of the land. And I'm not, I'm not a, he said, don't be ashamed. He said, don't be afraid to share truths, truth bombs, they call them. It offends some people. But if we don't know about it, and if the younger generation that don't know about it, how are we going to be able to act and continue developing our, 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 our lands? In 1850, the population in Canada was 25 million tribal people of different, speaking different languages. Their culture, their ways of life, fully, fully alive and well. As we speak today, Nohumarantik, 2.5 million of Indian ancestry in Canada. 1.5 million of those are in Treaties 1 to 11 territory. Imagine the total destruction of human life. So we have survived. We are here, and I like the speeches, I like the way they're they're, they're put together and also very encouraging and, and, um, and, and uh, it, it, it well, it's well considering. Everything and anything. How to use it and how to do it. How to live, how to take care of our home, what, what it means. We ate about is a part of that. When the newcomer came and wanted the land, there were some good laws, international laws, that were used and implemented. And one of them was the treaty making. To guarantee, to, to guarantee the continuance of sovereignty, the continuance of ownership of the land and the natural resources to be our relative, not objects, just to, just to, just to grow and get, get rid of, no, and, but as our relative, to be relative, it was done in, in a contemporary manner. The treaties one to 11 territory, we agreed to set land aside for ourselves, for our holy ceremonies, for our holy way of life. We agreed that it'd be a traditional territory. Our ancestors set aside territories. You're in Treaty 6, 1 to 11, home of the Edmonton Oilers, by the way. <laughs> oh, congratulate Treaty 7 for winning the Great Cup. Let's give them a big round of applause, folks. Right on. <laughs> Treaty, Treaty 6, Treaty six uh, territory, Treaties 1 to 11. Kika kwe chihem wa ki musum pannog. O ma min stick, this island was made for us. Kaka kike wa. Never, for us never to run out of a way of life, to continue our way of life, to sustain our lives. The way you agreed here, as long as the sun shines, the waters flow. How, in this new way that you're going to develop our land, how are we to benefit from it? So it equates to God's promise. And that's when they readdress the, the original 1668 arrangement of how we were to benefit in 2018 for our programs and services and a way of life. 
<coughs> and this is when the trust funds were set aside. It has been affirmed from time to time. And today, ladies and gentlemen, it suggests that the value is $2 trillion and earning an interest of $35 billion a year. Indian Affairs gets their $8 billion out of their five-year operation. For what? To suppress us. Security of the land, Canada's finest security, is paid from there. Infrastructure to keep our hosts, since we're the host, to keep them safe, from, you know, having good bridges and good highways. Yes, it comes from there. And none of it, none of it is taxpayers' money. Because the way that the, Her Highness made the arrangement, that I, this is my colony, this is, my, this, this is the arrangement that I made with the original inhabitants of this land. The money that I make from here, I will set aside every year, will be, to be deposited in, into, into that account. And that's to last as long as the sunshine, grass, grows, rivers flow. And then, next slide, it's guaranteed in our in Articles of Treaty 6 that we will continue benefiting from the Queen's bounty, that we will, be, we will qualify to get our share. And just recently now, uh, my, my cousin over there, uh, former chief uh, Wallace Fox, he, 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 he took it on by going to higher chambers and then, and then going to, uh, asking the, the courts to verify, yes, it is true that tribal nations today of treaties 1 to 11 can qualify of, of getting their monies exactly the same way Indian Affairs does. It's such a new information and it's, it's a shock to some that this information is real and then it, 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 it's, a, it's available to us. And that this is one of the things that treaties 1 to 11 it, it, uh, has been promoting, has been educating our people. But man, oh man, oh man, the, the colonization runs so deep Nahumagantik. We're not even believing our own information when we see it, when we hear it. We want to believe the one that is still suppressing us. We want to support them and we want to act and do things like them. But those days are over, Nahumagantik. We have a different class of, of indigenous peoples here that, that are now that are now re-educated. They weren't, so all this stuff here that we're talking about is not even taught in law school. Our, in, our indigenous peoples, our Métis peoples that are going to law school, they're not taught this stuff. They're not allowed, this, is, this part, this kind of a curriculum information is not allowed in the schools. And it's unfortunate. We had to learn it and we had to, we had to suffer I, I, I stand before you as a non-graduate from the, from the University of Southern California, where in the 1980s, Indian Affairs agreed to, to sponsor people to take a specialized course in facilitating leadership training, community organization, organizational development, workshops and designing, and, 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 and improving the quality of education. I didn't, I didn't do my final 10 days of the review and writing, writing the exam because I got called to Regina, the headquarters of Indian Affairs for our region. And there, there were four officials. He says, Eric, before you, before you complete, he says, here's a form that you'd like us to sign. And then in there, I had to commit five years to civil service. And I just recently gone to school, same, same place, with Indian Affairs officials, when they were going to be pushing self-government. Well, five of those, five of us that qualified for that program, four signed in. Four of those signed on in order to get the certificate. 
Me, I said, let me think about this. I came home and talked to my late father, and my late uncle, my cousins. And he said, hey, go check it out. Go match it. Did you gain enough knowledge? to sustain yourself, to be able to feed your family, to take care of your family, to be able to teach and continue to work. And I said, yes, I learned enough. Well, why sign into something, he said. And this is where the first time my late uncle says, Tane, he says, kapakete taman ki koyagi mi siin. Soon you have to go to that. He says, why? Why give up something that God gave you in order to get a few dollars to get ahead? He says, continue your work. He says, if you've, if you've, if you've learned enough, continue your work. So I've done research. I read and read and read, and I ran into some good people, good educators of international, domestic, national, regional level and elders. Even me, so Paul Sanderson, he writes about it. Our, our economic development. To go back to call upon Mother Earth, to call upon the spirit of the, of the plant, for the results of what you saw, what was mentioned here. It's a spirited gift. Also, on one hand, never to run out of resources for our survival as na tribal nations or tri tribal governments. The trust funds were in place. But also, as the, as the non-Indian, we agreed to share the land. And if there's a choice of vocation that you would choose, by all means, it's there. No, if you want to participate in economic development, 100% of it can be yours. <laughs> what we call the J Treaty. Some time ago, at the uh, downtown mall in uh, Saskatoon, the U.S. Army came to set up a table there, recruiting. And a reporter asked him, do you have a lot of Aboriginal people come through to sign up? And he said, yes. Well, how come you can do that from being from America? He said, we can exercise it because of the J Treaty. So, what, what's, what's developing here, that we can reinvigorate the original international trade system that existed before contact. How did cayenne pepper end up in the prairie regions that is a southern, where the earth is always hot? How did my grandmother get her annual pouch every three years from her relatives in Montana? Every time we were sick, she'd mix that in hot water and we'd cover up two hours later again. Next day, sickness was gone. So my, one of my trips to Rocky Boy, Montana, I went to the relatives and he said, Who, we, we, we want to do protocol to get Ami Hwawa, Kaki. He said, go to the local natural food stores and you can buy it. He says, it's cayenne pepper. <laughs> and when it's treaty making, when it comes to partnerships, there have been a lot of misconceptions here of who's who. Who's the true treaty partner? Who, who made treaty? It's not AFN, it's not FSIN or regional body or tribal council that purport that they are. Who is the sovereign? Kiano Nahumarenti at Fort Carlton, Willow Creek, and Battle River.
That's where I come from. You want to start cooperatives? Come and see us, Battle River Tribal Nations, the affiliated tribes of Battle River, Willow Creek, same thing, they can have the same thing. We're in it already, Battle River Education, Battle River Health. We want to improve that. We have, eight, eight, we have nine reservations in, in a community. After the, after the war on Indians, after the assimilation by administration and starvation, there were only 1,500 left of Battle River tribal nations. 1,500. One of those reserves had only three people. And they weren't allowed to have wives in a local area, not even a cousin. Yeah. <laughs> nah, just kidding. <laughs> they all went out and they got, got wives to improve the population. <clears throat> That's how many they are. Now today, ladies and gentlemen, we're on the 80,000 80, mark. Battle River, where our next move is Battle River Treaty Council. Battle River Treaty Council. Battle River Political Office. If you want to live, if you want to move ahead, don't do things the way it has been done by going beneath. Okay? or third party. It impedes your development. It impedes the process. Poundmaker went the sovereign way. We developed the Poundmaker Integrated Services. We went outside the box and negotiating for, for, for the opportunities, what our ancestors talked about. We're going after the, the compensations as a part of the treaty that your treaty people promised, indigenous or tribal people. If the land is developed, you will get compensated accordingly. They can't even, the tort process is so enormous, they can't even begin to, to to, uh, to, to add up and how much we are owed Noapumagandik. Then we go on moving into a separating federal trust, trust fund, acquiring but no, no 10 year agreement. No, 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 it's not necessary. If you agree to that at the end of 10 years, you have nothing, you'll be beneath the province. Fourth year, fourth level government. It's just as true as we see, we sit here, because it's well planned. And we go to the, the, the direct transfers from Indian trusts because it's there. As long as sunshine grass grows, all arrangements, rewriting, re-editing, rewriting, rewriting, rewriting. Asserting, enforcing accordingly. And in law, there's not one law that can say that you are wrong. They have to prove, they have to prove that you're wrong. And right now as we speak, we're helping one tribe that lost their lands and the judge made a decision in their interest. He says, this is not about prestige. This is not about reconciliation. This is not about millions. This is not about billions. This is about trillions owed to this reserve. Trillions owed to this reserve. When you have lots of money in the Indian country, it says you're going to be raw. And it is still that way to this very day. It has not changed and it will not change. The only way it's going to change is if you sign on a dotted line agreeing to you, that you are going to remain beneath a third party to be represented. How is your spokesperson, an organization? 
signing or signing a convention, the chief and council passing on their representationship, spokespersonship to that third, third party. Once you do that, then you've given them all the rights to be able to make decisions exactly what's happening to us in Ottawa today, in our regional offices. It is very, very dangerous, Nahumaganti. Thank goodness that we have a different capacity of human resources today that are beginning to think different and they are beginning to take the leadership roles and becoming the new school for reforming for the good way, the Indian way, God's way, godly way, spirited way. So again, ladies and gentlemen, the Treaty 6 territory here are the partners. The sovereign partners that can make everything possible, what you're talking about, what you're talking about here. Willow Creek, Battle River, Fort Pitt Agency, Amiskwachi Wakayakane, Shell Lake Agency, 1899 Admission Mananosa, Muskwachi, a subsequent Treaty 6 na tribal nations. In the making of Canada, time of confederation, it was Quebec that spoke up and said, there is, we are, we, this is not our land we are on. Everything and anything that we're doing here predates. We are coming here as subjects of the crown. We are the subjects of the crown. These tribal nations have their own confederation, tribal confederation, tribal alliances, tribal, tri tri tribal organizations, and tribal affiliations. And then they've been exercising this law, our law, God's law, how to do it, on how to live. It wasn't a part of the discussion, therefore, our law is alive and well. And all we have to do is reach in, reach out to these experts to retrain our people. I've been trained by those people. I've been retrained to, re to rethink ceremonials to advance my thinking. As, you meant, as it says in, in, in this introduction, we have two systems on our reserve. We have the political chief and council, and we have the society, men and women. The selection is done by capture. Five years ago, I was, the, I was captured to be the, to be the Uskabe Usukimau, society chief. We have a covert name. Others adopted cowboy society. But they have also adopted covert names to continue when the priests and Indian agents were not allowing societies to continue. We call our, on the, the, our ancestors adopted the, the title Machane Sak. Don't give a damn, guys. <laughs> Don't give a damn society. It doesn't matter what, what goes on. We're primary. If there's a loss in the community, boom, we're right there. If there's a ceremony, right there. I'm not afraid to admit we've maintained in the growth and the, con and the well and well-being of our society. Cowboy societies, they have their annual ceremonies. We, we too have our annual ceremony. We have the songs that belong to that society and, only, and can only be used when that society have their ceremony. And we've adopted their circle dance to be our annual ritual. We need to do, do that more of incorporating that into okay, the formation of a tribal law society, Nehio tribal law society. 
and use those ceremonies to, to certify them to practice Indian law, tribal law. It, it, once we practice, once the, the uh, Lord Denning, when we visited, we, vis we visited the London lobby. Yes, he says, you occupy the territory as populations. But he says, implement your institutions so you occupy, okay, you occupy the land, the formations of institutions. What is an institution that's going to represent tribal nations that made treaty? Battle River Treaty Office. Unitskapuni Treaty Office. Unitskapuni Government House. Unitskapuni Treaty, uh, Treaty Council. That can uh, deal directly, bilaterally with Ottawa. And then through their prestige organization and their uh, faculties, economic development to do all the things that be said to, to be done. Because we have that equality, equal opportunity, our elders made it that way. And if we, if we refrain from doing that, retraining our people, bringing the language back, reviving our societies, Old school, if you've been brought up through a residential school, start getting yourself trained. Start getting to your ceremonies. Start doing the fasting. Go and seek elders how to help the next society that's going to take over and how, learn how do you can support them. Because there's some reluctance that exists within our reservations. And we're losing. We're losing the language, we're losing our ceremonies. But we now have a new growth of capacity here that needs support. And they're gonna be our new school leadership. And if they get the right education, the right knowledge, the right encouragement, and the right support, we will have a better future for the next generation, and there'll always be there something there for the onboard. Re Reacquainting ourselves with some laws, Nehio laws, tribal laws, Blackfoot laws, NIC new laws, NIC new, NIC new tribal people's laws. Here are some of the Nehio laws. Kakyo, to, to create balance. That will impede the future. You're always pulled back and you're told about this. Some of them, some leadership say, no, then that's too much. You're always where, where the traditionalists and elders are talking about these over and over again. That is our, our, our duty. So to, to try and intervene that you do something that God will punish you for it. You don't bring bad luck for your, your family. You don't cause disruption in, 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 in our societies. That's why the, the word, these words are shared. That's why these words of caution are shared. And if we fail to do that, this will come true. True, those words will come true. And it has happened in some, in some places. We now have some reserves that have signed in into the First Nations Lands Act regime and completed it. And in the, in the near future, after 2020, they're going to become the first order, the first order of surrendered reserves to be municipalized. And if we refrain, and if we, if we, if we, if we fail to continue the indigenous way or the tribal way of relearning and asserting, enforcing our law, 
This will come true in our Humagantik. Achamemotan, we have been blessed in our Humagantik. The deal was made already in 1876. Now it's up to us and it's a good time to make it a reality and, and let's make it happen for our young people. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. <laughs>